Ah. Finally. What's up? Welcome back to the channel. Sorry for the absence, but to be completely honest, I haven't had that much to film. Uh, waiting on parts and such. Anyway, what we have today is the exhaust uh, manifolds that we're going to be replacing and also the uh, air oil separator, which finally came in the mail, which is fantastic. So let's jump right into it. So if you guys remember in the last videos, um, I went through imported and polished my stock um, XT manifolds which is this is just the, uh, the passenger side one um, and after I get everything done and installed on the car I went to put on the high flow cross pipe here for our 2004 Forester XT and it did not fit so I ordered a 2004 STI high flow cross pipe which is this one um, installed on the car with these um, XT manifolds and it still did not fit um, so I got hooked up with Andy at Subi Performance and he had a couple of STI manifolds sitting around so here's a side-by-side -side comparison uh, this one is just a bit bigger um, so when I did the porting job on these I opened the the holes up here to the same uh, diameter if you will as the STI ones just to give it a little bit more breathing ability but if you look closely here you can see that uh, obviously it's a lot thicker but this curvature here when it comes down out of uh, the head is much tighter than this one here so this is the XT when it comes down it's nice and long kind of mellow right up into the up pipe and this one's short swoops in really quick right into the up pipe so there's the difference and uh, the the driver side is roughly that the same as the XT's but um, there's just uh, little difference but this is the biggest difference I've, I've seen the the curvature here is way different so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, get all this stuff loosely bolted up where and adjusted properly and then go ahead and get everything torqued down so let's do it before i start installing the bolts and the nuts and stuff like that i'm going to go ahead and take some um, copper paste and put around everything it just helps assist in um, removal whenever when and if rather um, when and if i have to take these back off which i do have a little bit of a idea maybe later in the uh, in the future putting on some equal length headers just to help with heat distribution and efficiency as far as uh, flow goes but
right, people? The exhaust is working. On to the AOS now. Alright, we've got the fittings we're going to need, zip ties, some hose, a sticker, and our mounting bracket with hardware. Packaging. A lot of hose, if you guys can see that. All the hose plus some to do the job 100%. You will not have to purchase any of it if you pay attention and cut like you're supposed to. There's all the hoses. wrapped yeah that's nice look at that now this is the uh, street series air oil separator from IAG um, I didn't go with the competition because I didn't want all the gases and uh, residue and whatever that's going through to be vented to the atmosphere. I wanted to um, recirculate it uh, just like the regular PCV system, except this is going to pull all the contaminants out of the recirculated air and keep it from going back into the intake, which is awesome. All right, let's get this puppy installed. All right, guys. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet as there's probably a gazillion videos on how to install this thing already on YouTube. So short and sweet version, obviously you're going to pull your uh, intercooler off if you have it. You're going to remove the passenger side uh, valve cover breather lines as well as the driver side. We'll get to that later. Um, and also your PCV system which is right here, just on the back side of the turbo right here. We're going to go ahead and pull that completely out and install the little Y fitting that comes with the uh, air oil separator. All right, we've got our PCV valve out. It sits right here under the turbo. Follow the screwdriver, Boop. right here. Goes into the drain port. Um, there's also a little uh, vacuum line here. So this is the PCV valve, the root of all evil <laughs> for Subarus when it goes bad. Um, I think they're supposed to make a noise when you shake them and this one This one doesn't make any noise It's definitely definitely bad. So I'm glad I'm putting that air oil separator on it to eliminate this piece. All right, let's move on to the next step Now we're going to take the supplied um, Y fitting here. It's going to sit down right where the PCV valve we just removed uh, we're just going to sit right in its location. As soon as that's pushed down and in place, we're going to take and remove the four bolts around the throttle body here. We're going to take the throttle body off for easier access to the vacuum line that we need to get to that's underneath it. Okay, the hose that we're going to be removing is right here. There's a little pinch clip. I'm going to be taking that off and installing the hose provided from uh, IAG. If you're ever doing maintenance on your car, being your SUBI or something, um, I would encourage you to take off the throttle body here, like we just did, 
and actually look on the inside there's a little uh, like low point if you will it's down here Let's see if I can get my light there's a low point down there if you can see that take off your uh, eh, throttle body there and see how much oil is actually sitting that would be recycled throughout your uh, your car it's it's pretty pretty impressive just take a look at it all right so we've got our 3 8 inch hose installed on the bottom nipple here under the throttle body excuse the Harley cruising through um, and then go ahead and reinstall your throttle body and move on to the next bit of instruction Now that that is off, we will be able to uh, mount up our bracket supplied by IAG for the AOS. We'll sit right there. Uh, but first, we're going to go ahead and pull uh, the horn and bracket off right here and then move on from there. We're also going to take this bolt out. Alright, so we've got our air oil separator setting up on the bench here. Um, they have all of these mounting points, so you, there's a fair amount of adjustability for when you install this. Um, however, you, you know, basically, however you want it to sit in your car. Um, take the bracket bolted on somewhere along there depending on how I want it to sit um, and after the brackets on we'll take and put these two supplied lines it's got the AN fittings on with the o-rings those will go one here and one here that's the coolant lines it's going to keep the oil in a liquidy type of state so that it actually falls to the bottom down here and drains back down into the crankcase where it needs to go That's how it's more or less going to sit. I'm going to do a little dry dry fit and make sure that's the right height and everything that I like. And then go ahead and bolt it up or tighten it up from there. Alright, so i got the height set that I like for my canister. Um, and I've also gotten a couple of hoses ran. Um, this is the one that we ran, this top hose here that comes out. This is the one that we ran that goes under the throttle body here. This bottom line here is the drain tube so it runs from the very bottom of the AOS comes around right into uh, this Y fitting that we put in here that replaced the PCV valve um, we've got this hose here this is the bottom portion of the coolant so it would be the return line I believe I've got it ran it goes into the turbo right here um, and I use the clamps and stuff supplied from a uh, IAG um, this top hose here is where the coolant will come in out of the expansion tank um, it's kind of just hanging out here because I haven't mounted my expansion tank back in yet um, what next okay now we're gonna work on getting these three ports here hooked in as well as these ones all right so this next step is taking this 5 8 hose here we're gonna cut about a three inch section out hook it into our uh, 90 fitting here and then put it into uh, this other port um, on the Y valve that we put in for the PCV system. 
All right, we've got our 5 8 piece hooked up with our 90 right here that goes into the uh, drain tube basically, runs into that. I've also ran the uh, driver's side uh, valve cover breather line, which runs here, kind of underneath right there, comes around, goes into the driver's side valve cover. Now this last port here, this top one, I'm gonna run a piece to the passenger side uh, valve cover breather port, which is right there. And then we will have these two left. Um, this one's gonna run, this one to the, the left here is gonna run over here to the turbo inlet because it's a street series. And this piece on the right, this port here, is gonna run into where the blow-by sensor is right there. So I'll get those knocked out real quick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna conclude the installation of this air oil separator for the 2004 Forester, as well as the um, exhaust manifolds and high flow cross pipe. Um, there are a couple extra ports here that I have to go ahead and plumb in, but I'm not gonna do that until I get the expansion tank installed. Um, but, like I said, that's gonna wrap it up. Um, super easy installation. Uh, IEG has excellent um, instructions for you to follow. You can download them from the website if you're installing this on your vehicle. Um, if you have a Subaru, I, I, you probably should do it anyway just because the PCB system kind of blows. You know, but whatever. If you're driving easy, it should be sufficient, I suppose. But anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And also, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can keep up with this build. And be around for the first start, which is coming up soon. I'm way pumped on that, slash extremely nervous. I don't know. Every engine I've ever built, first start's always. Whew. But anyway, please enjoy the rest of your day, morning, evening, night, whatever it is for you around the world. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Later.